you can accelerate your plant's growth by summering them outdoors. But wait, before you just chuck them outside, watch this video to make sure you don't accidentally kill them. Growing joy. Hello, plant friend. I'm Maria. I am your new best plant friend, and I'm here to help you care for plants like these successfully and grow joy in your life while doing so. And today, we're talking about one of the most joyful things you can do with your house plants, which is watching them explode in growth. Watching a teeny tiny plant like this all of a sudden get this tall, have the leaves double in size. And that can truly happen if you put your plants outside for the summer. Obviously, our plants love being outside. That's where they were created, right? We're taking these outdoor plants, bringing them inside. So putting your plants outside for the summer is kind of like sending them to summer camp where they can kind of grow up, have new experiences, and come back home once it gets cold in the winter. But there is an art to this, right? Our plants have acclimated to our homes indoors and they're sensitive sallies. So you can't just chuck them into direct sunlight and think it's gonna be okay. So after owning houseplants for almost a decade, I've learned a couple of tricks as I've put my plants outside year after year after year that I wanted to share with you. So first off, let's talk about which plants are good to put outside and which plants aren't. Some plants that I love summering outdoors that I feel like really love to bask in the sun and will explode in growth are plants like this ficus here. This ficus is in, in they can grow hundreds of feet tall outside in, in nature when where they grow naturally. So you put this plant outside, it's going to shoot up, the leaves are going to get bigger, it's going to be amazing. I love putting my monsteras outdoors. Bird of paradise are great. Hoya love being outside. You're going to see all sorts of growth and probably blooms. Citrus, speaking of blooms, citrus plants love to be outside. If you, if you winter them inside, you're more than welcome to put them outside. Um, snake plants are also amazing. I'm always so jealous of my friends in California who have snake plants as hedging and me in New York, you know, can only keep them inside. So any plants that thrive in bright light and also can be drought tolerant do great outside. Speaking of outside, let's talk about what this transition looks like. I would recommend not putting your plants outside until it's over 50 degrees at night. So it can warm up during the day. Your plants will like that, but you don't want to put your plants 24-7 outside until it's over 50 degrees. Anything under 50 degrees is going to cold shock your plant. I might argue to be safe anything under 60 degrees. 50 degrees your plant will probably tolerate, but 60 degrees is what I do to be safe because you don't want to wake up in the morning and your plant is like withering and shivering and you feel like the worst plant parent in the world. So you're going to wait until the nights are around 60 degrees. And then the sun, you know, if you live in New York like me, it could be 90 degrees, at, you know, during the day and then 60 degrees at night. Before you take your plants outside, I highly recommend repotting them if you're noticing their root bound. So if you see roots coming out of the bottom of your pot, if you take the plant out of the pot and you see a lot of roots at the bottom, your plant is about to explode in growth outside. So it's important to set it up for success. You don't want a plant that's already pretty cramped in its pot to then go outside. Whatever is going above is going below, right? As above, so below. So if the plant is growing more leaves, it's also growing more roots and it needs more roots to sustain those leaves. So you want to make sure that it's in an adequate size pot. If you're bumping it up, you're going to go two inches of a pot larger. We have a whole video you can watch all about repotting plants if this is something you struggle with. So 50 degrees or warmer, repot if necessary. And now this is the most important thing. Okay, come here, listen up. If you don't do anything that I talk about except for one thing, listen to this point I'm about to make. The shade outside is more light than the brightest light indoors, right? Because the volume of light available to our plants outside is 10x, 100x than the light that our plants get indoors just from windows. So understand where you're transitioning your plant outside, even if you move it into the shade, it is going to be like completely shocked and excited, but shocked originally. Um, when moving it outside. So it's really important to not take a plant that I've had in bright indirect light or even a southern exposure, a lot of light, and just put it right in the middle of my lawn with no shade. That plant is either going to burn or it's going to completely wither. The leaves will curl. It's going to like curl in on itself and it's going to be so unhappy. So the key with moving your plants outside for the summer is first you move them into a shaded area. You let them acclimate, right? All of a sudden there's going to be wind. All of a sudden there's going to be drastic drops in temperature that they don't experience indoors. They have to kind of get used to their new surroundings, like taking their first steps, right? Let them sit in the shade for like one to two weeks and then you're slowly going to start introducing the plants to bright light, right? So I have put my monster 
Sarah's in bright, direct light, and they thrive and shoot up, but they need a little bit of a transition first. So just understand that the light outside is way stronger than the light inside, and you need to gradually move your plant into more and more light exposure outside. I would do it in weak increments. Two things to be wary of once the plant establishes outside. Number one, you're watering. You are likely going to have to water your plant so much more, right? The temperatures are going to oscillate, vacillate a lot. It's going to be really hot. Your pot is going to dry out and then it's going to get cold. It's Your plant's going to be all over the place. You need to probably water more often. So if I took this plant outside and I watered this plant once a week or once every two weeks, I'm going to be checking on it every two to three days to make sure that it hasn't dried out completely. This is also going to be dependent on, you know, this isn't a plastic pot so it's not going to dry out as fast but if you have plants in terracotta pots outside that heat those terracotta pots are going to wick the moisture out of the soil a lot faster so be mindful of that be mindful that you're going to have to pay attention to the watering particularly in that first month as your plant is transitioning and frankly as you're transitioning to understanding how to care for your plants as outdoor house plants instead of indoor house plants the other thing to be mindful of is pests this was something I didn't realize the first time I took my plants outside for the summer. There are pests outside. There's way more pests outside than there are pests inside, right? So if you put your plants outside, they're going to get pests. That's just natural because that's what happens outdoors, right? So it's not about if it's going to get pests. It's just when and if you need to be prepared. The first year I put my citrus outside. I put limey my lime tree outside. He grew so many leaves, but he had scale, which had honeydew, which attracted ants. And he had ants all over him at one point. So you have to be pretty diligent about pest management. You're going to want to have pest control techniques on hand. So the minute you see a pest infestation, you can handle it, right? So I always at all times in my DIY houseplant first aid kit, which we have a whole separate video about if you're interested, I have the uh, neem oil, neem oil and bioprotectant from We the Wild. And then I also have the bioprotectant and the bioinsecticide from Arbor. I also have um, systemic granules for plants who need that. Be careful, like don't put systemic on citrus, but I could put systemic on, you know, any of my other ornamental tropical plants. But you're going to want to have pest control methods on hand so you can treat it immediately if and when you have a pest outbreak. Don't stress about it though. It's going to happen. You're going to treat it. You're going to move on. Life moves on. Pests happen. It's okay. So here's the beauty of bringing your plants outside. Yes, your plants are going to get pests, but there are going to be other pests outside that will eat the houseplant pests, right? So there is a bit of a survival of the fittest aspect of being outside. And often if there is a pest outbreak, it will correct itself, right? Because of all of the natural elements and other predators out there. But for when it gets out of control, and you want to catch it early. Um, I think it's really important to have some pest control on hand. So if you do have a pest outbreak that is not getting fixed naturally, you can get in there immediately. Now, I still use natural products, right? But I just think it's really important to have, you know, I have a whole video on a DIY houseplant first aid kit, which talks about everything that I have on hand for if a plant gets hurt um, or is hurting, I guess. Uh, but I always have neem oil on hand and I have a uh, bioprotectant and bioinsecticide. So if I see a pest outbreak, I can, you know, shake this up in a bottle of water, spritz the plant down, it'll manage the pests and we're good to go. A fun thing about taking your plants outdoors is I feel like you really do get to give them the experience that they would have been having if they were in nature, right? So you can hose your plant down. You can water them like it's getting rainfall. You can even put your plants outside of, you know, an overhang so that they can actually get rainfall. Just make sure that they have drainage so they don't end up sitting in, you know, a pot of water. But I would say, you know, make sure that you're washing the leaves down. If you, if you hose your plants down, that will also naturally help deter some pest issues. You will be increasing your watering, but I would also say increase like the extent of how you water. I just think that's kind of fun. And obviously, obviously not something you can do inside when you can't just like be spraying water all over your floors. My husband would kill me if I did that. So I definitely take advantage of that outdoors. The only other thing that I would say is we're going to make a whole separate video. I do have a whole podcast episode on this topic, what to do when you bring your plants back inside. But like we talked about, there's going to be pest activity, even like stuff in the soil, right? You might have spiders in the soil of your plant. So when you bring it back inside, make sure that you go through a pest management protocol 
bring it inside, spray the plant down with your neem oil or with your insecticide, drain the soil, give it a really good wash, and then quarantine the plants if you can in an area of your home to make sure that you're not bringing any hitchhikers in that could wreak havoc on your entire plant collection. So those are my tips. I highly encourage trying this if you haven't. I had such joy my first summer putting putting plants outside on my mom's lawn in the suburbs. I still lived in New York City, but I brought my citrus and my monstera home. They grew so much. It was so, it's really fun. I feel like it helps you connect to how these plants exist in nature, right? Because I think sometimes because we know these plants as house plants and they come in pretty pots and, you know, we can kind of trim them and be kind of precious with them. It's kind of fun to be reminded that these are living things that occur in nature that we are privileged enough to bring home and and care for, but they really thrive if you transition them and if you put them outside, it's a really fun experience. So I hope you have a beautiful spring and summer, and I hope with these tips, you keep growing joy.